Welcome to Green Shoots, a very special show for startups. And today we have a very special guest. We have Sunil Sachar. Sunil Sachar is uh, so many things. He is a best-selling author. He owns a global sports brand. He is an angel investor and uh, whatnot. But today we are talking about a very special venture that is co-founded by Sunil. And that venture is Huddle. Huddle is a is an accelerator for early stage startups and several startups. They help, uh, they handhold those startups and make them uh, get some success. So let's go straight to Sunil and have a small chat with him. Hi, Sunil. Welcome to the show. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Sunil. And uh, while we know that you don so many hats, but today we are trying to focus on Huddle, your special venture and uh, the venture that helps so many startups uh, getting some uh, success. So why don't you tell us what is Huddle all, all about? Absolutely. Uh, firstly, thank you for having uh, me, you know, over here on the on the show uh, to talk about Huddle and you know what we're setting out to do. Uh, we're an accelerator for startups um, across sectors and uh, for startups all over the country. Um, how we like working with our portfolio, uh, currently portfolio of 45 uh, startups uh, based pan India. We have certain themes that are of uh, utmost importance to us. Uh, these could be ventures in the electric vehicle ecosystem. Some of them are companies. Uh, major majority of them are in the consumer space building, intent focused food or alternative food ventures. Uh, and for that matter, the diversification of our portfolio, all factors into one consumer that we're trying to build uh, a, a portfolio of services for, and that's the consumer of tomorrow. And uh, we believe it's a consumer in 2025 will be able to leverage Huddle's uh, portfolio of startups. How we like working with our teams is by being as operationally involved in their business. Um, and for that, we provide them a bunch of services and infrastructure support that could be from helping them produce the products or services in the back end to distributing it to uh, the larger population that they are targeting. Uh, we also do provide uh, financial support as you know, we've, we've realized uh, it's important to be able to pick up capital, be it equity or debt um, if needed. And we provide those services uh, by investing in our startups either directly or via a bunch of investors that we work very closely with. Uh, but that being said, I do want to conclude with that for us, over the course of having built uh, 45 ventures in the portfolio with several more uh, becoming front runners, it's not only about raising capital, it's about giving them the right kind of mentorship. And because of uh, the importance of mentorship, we've got a large mentor panel that uh, allocates uh, themselves towards a certain uh, team. Uh, my my uh, associates, analysts, and my founding partner, uh, Ishan and I, set out and then work with these ventures uh, up until pre-seed all the way to a series A and a series B funding. That's some amazing work, Sanil, that Huddle and you guys are doing. But what I want to know is what has changed off late recently or to be very specific in this COVID era or post COVID era, how things have changed and do you think from uh, this environment which has changed will in some way or the other affect startups? No, that's a, that's a really good question. Uh, because, you know, we, we did ask ourselves that when, when, when COVID first made us all uh, think twice about our respective business models, I think the first point was the largest change in the startup ecosystem that, you know, I, I could be generalizing when I say this from my side is I think sustainability has become more important than creating just large valuations um you know valuations by the end of the day have to have some sort of back back-ended calculation that makes sense uh one of the areas that we feel has become a highlighted significance for the startup ecosystem is running sustainable ventures that can make sense when you look at the books by the end of the day the same way traditional uh, or legacy businesses are built uh when it comes to our way of working fortunately from day one our job has been to ensure that uh, our founders and their teams, be them funded or unfunded, can self-sustain, uh, can make sense of their own cash flows, and they can actually grow at a speed that is also easy to manage. I think that's very important, uh, something that COVID has 
taught us is to be able to manage your acceleration as well. And our services and support haven't changed because they've always been giving this infrastructure in the form of an advisory and hands-on advisory service. So uh, one of the areas that has significantly helped our portfolio and some of the colleagues we have in the ecosystem that are not our portfolio is giving them our services just as a way of lending support so that tomorrow they don't have to spend extra capital in procuring what already is a part of our huddle of uh, services. Um, so I, I think, uh, I think you know, one of the last points I want to add here is that the situation we're in today, you know, again, going back into a uh, state of uh, confined uh, lockdowns, uh, I think the startup ecosystem is best equipped now to uh, build a more robust infrastructure for what is going to be their customers. So they know how to service their core clientele rather than spreading themselves thin. And as investors, and I speak on you know behalf of some of the close colleagues and investors that we have, I think we've started recognizing founders for their agility, which we anyway used to do. But now agility and being able to do disaster management has become one of the core pri priorities of how we assess a venture to accelerate and then invest in. So Sunil, when you guys handhold these early stage startups, and uh, I'm sure in this uh, time of social distancing and this COVID era, you are doing that handholding without a handshake. So uh, what I want to know now is how are you helping a startup, which is at a very early stage in the sense that let's say if, if it is at that ideation stage. So what do you have at Huddle for that uh, kind of startup? So. Firstly, where you know our doors are always uh, open, or should I say, our, our virtual doors are always open these days, and you know we've we've got a, a team that's always willing to talk about newer ideas, be it a thesis that we have already created or a thesis that you know we're willing to create in the future. But if a venture is at a pre-product or an ideation stage, uh, typically they are not um, a fit for Huddle. There are incubators out there, or pre-incubators as well out there that might be a better support to them. Um, what we, uh, where, where we like getting involved is when a venture has some sort of product market fit, if they've been able to show even early traction that could be failed traction for that matter, so that we have the ability to amend certain mistakes of theirs and provide them the support that they can then leverage rather than give them learnings from day one. You know, one of our biggest, uh, learnings as founders and respectively in our own ventures prior to this has also been that you have to make your own mistakes as a founder before you go out there and get an accelerator or investor on board. Um, so for a venture that has some sort of product market fit, the first area that we focus on are recurring pain points that they require. So if their recurring pain point is to first figure out that their existing product has a saturation to it. What we will do is enable the sales so that they can reach their saturation, but also help them build a new product line. And similarly, be it the kind of products or services that we have with some of our social media and mobile first companies, it's the same methodology, but it's also very tailor-made. Um, so I can't generalize it, but for everyone who's in the ideation stage, um, while Huddle might not be applicable for acceleration, we're always open to talking to ventures because we've got colleagues in the incubation ecosystem that can support them until they might be applicable for us. Um, so always open for a, a conversation and a chat. Okay, so you don't take startups which are at that early stage, ideation stage, and they should come via some incubator first, and you are also there to help them find a good incubator, so that is good. But then let's say some startup has already crossed that stage, has done some bit of testing some bit of prototype or some uh, work uh, on grassroots level. But how is Huddle accepting these startups uh, and in their portfolio? So let's say, what is the criteria like basically I want to know and how has that changed again uh, in view of this COVID era, pre-COVID era and post-COVID era, have things changed? Yeah, no, I, I, I love the fact that you're drawing those uh, comparisons of pre and post and, you know, they, it, it makes us also uh, think, think hard and long why we've uh, made certain changes, which I'll share with you. Um, when we 
when we uh, analyze a venture at Huddle, uh, firstly, it is a venture uh, that has to have some sort of thesis that we have built. So, for instance, if it's anything in the D2C ecosystem, electric vehicle ecosystem, as I was mentioning, anything mobile first, we've got a strong infrastructure and support function to help them anywhere from pre seed to all the way to a Series A without them actually needing to raise as much capital. That's the kind of support and hard work we've put in internally. Uh, so first, we have to be able to put ourselves in the shoes of the startup when we're evaluating. When we evaluate a venture, it's on a rolling basis. So we don't run programs as a lot of our colleagues in the acceleration and incub incubation world do. We look at ventures day in and day out um, and evaluate them to figure out if we were to get them invested in or invest in them in the future, do we have the ability to work with them for five to seven years? What is typically a, a range of working with an early stage venture? And I think to answer your second question, has our evaluation changed over time? Uh, we've become more, uh, I wouldn't say, we've become more open-ended rather than cynical. Then I, and, and I think open-ended because what we've realized is that if a startup can come to us with one or two solutions, um, it's, you know, there's nothing wrong in having one or two solutions for the same thesis. And it's actually better to have contingency plans before you roll out. Uh, the second plan, uh, what's important is to be able to analyze a venture for, as I was mentioning, their agility or their contingency plans as well. So I think our filtering layer has become slightly more on how do they preempt emergencies that might occur. The second element is because of our core functionalities being created in certain sectors, we've also created a specific D2C accelerator within Huddle. So while we've got an agnostic uh, focus, there is a focus clearly on D2C acceleration that is in enabling a funnel for such ventures because there's a large D2C rise that we have been able to witness for the last year and a half, two years at least. Um, so, you know, that, I think that's the only additional change that there is more filters of focus that are being created uh, within Huddle. Sanil, let's say some startup has crossed those early stages, ideation, and has started uh, product development and all, and now getting also some revenue. Here on, what's the mantra for growth for such startups and how Huddle helps them reach that point? I think my, you know, uh, my, my mantra for uh, a startup that has a product market fit um, is going to be the same as what Huddle might suggest to them. And then, you know, how Huddle can help them, I'll get to. I think the first is if you figured out your product market fit, I would ask founders to you know, be twice as sure whether they have actually figured out why their product does not fit. I think many a times we focus on product market fit to create a, a seamless hand in glove situation. I think it's important to know why your product doesn't work so that at least you don't spend resources that could be capital or time in trying to create another product or trying to create another avenue for a market that is not going to be relevant for you. Uh, that's one key suggestion. Uh, the second suggestion is the second you create a product market fit, it's always good to figure out what is your ceiling and saturation point. Um, and in order to do that, if you need capital to do so, figure out do you need equity or working capital. You know, there are some phenomenal avenues to pick up what is revenue-based financing. Um, uh, it's not always about picking up equity. Uh, and that's where, you know, accelerators like us come in and get involved with ventures to help them create more fiscally sound decisions um, if in the case they're thinking more operationally, if they're thinking more on, on their feet uh, in, in, you know, in, in a situation of action and reaction. Many a time the founder is thinking about what they're doing right now and how do they need to solve it immediately. I think where all of us in the acceleration investment uh, space come in is we help and we want to ensure that you can figure out what you're going to require on the curve. So where are you going to be one month later or even 15 days later for that matter? Uh, where we get involved is then being able to figure out that if you need the capital, uh, can we invest or have you invested in? That's one. Uh, what would it take for you to figure out your saturation point? And what would it take for you to get receptive feedback from your same audience, your core customers to figure out what your next product or service needs to be? Um, I think that's very important. Um, and, you know, I think uh, to sort of outline that for the last point, it's what what history of, you know, co uh, competition in this space of 
any product versus product or brand versus brand tells us is those that win aren't developing their product you know on the on the go they're already thinking about what their consumer would want before their consumer asks for it and i think consumer research and data analytics is the core mantra for any startup that figures out product market fit to figure out their data analytics week in week out will help them answer where their product can graduate to and sometimes it's not even you know enablers like us that will be uh, suggesting that job it's your customer who will be talking to you that's very insightful sanil and sanil you noted you must have noticed that recently so many unicorns have come out of india and i'm sure a couple of them are waiting to come uh, from uh, huddles portfolio uh, very soon but and you work day in and day out with these investors who uh, invest money in these startup ideas and waiting to get uh, see them grow and be a unicorn some day has that perception or has something changed with these investors again uh, drawing parallels between that pre covid era and post covid era have do you think that investors have become more skeptical cynical or anything any change in particular that you've noticed i i think let me start off by the first point i i don't think any of the investors are afraid no one is afraid of um, the investment landscape of how or the startup landscape and I, and i think the simple answer for that is that the most successful startups aren't building for today they're building for the future um so they've already thought about a post covid era um they might have been building their products pre covid if you look at the unicorns that have been coming out uh, or those that are going to become unicorns all their products are built for the future they are either education companies that are building education that can penetrate the masses that can educate people that are already educated so upskilling uh, we're looking at um, you know saas based unicorns that know how to uh, become the backbone of certain companies it could be uh, you know fintechs that are already uh, ensuring better fiscal management for uh, consumers of the future where anyway affordability is a large question mark um, so all these products that we're talking about that i've referred about have built something that is actually you know 3 to 4 years at least down the line even the kind of ventures that we're building to are all unproven business models you know i i use that quote and quote un, unproven business models because as as investors of the past we might not we might write them off but what we've realized is that if you place yourself before your customer demands it those are the ventures that if not unicorns i think that you know that's that's one status quo will definitely be profitable ventures uh, as well that's some gyan that is going to help uh, startups i'm sure and thank you sanil for taking time out and joining us on the show thank you thank you